All right, so Microsoft just dropped Windows 11 version 2.5 H2, and honestly, same story as always, they're still blocking people from installing it on older computers. Look, if you're running Windows 10 right now, you've probably heard the news. Support ends October 14th, 2025. After that, no more security updates. Your computer basically becomes a sitting duck for viruses and hackers. Now, Microsoft S offering this extended support thing where you can pay them to keep getting updates for one more year. But come on, why should you have to pay extra just because your computer doesn't have some chip that most people did not even know existed until Windows 11 came out? Here's the thing. If your PC runs Windows 10 just fine, there's no reason it can't not handle Windows 11. It's not like they rebuilt the whole operating system from scratch. So today, I'm gonna show you how to get around these ridiculous hardware requirements using a free tool called Rufus. So let me break down what Microsoft says you need. They want an 8th generation Intel processor or newer. They want this TPM 2.0 security chip. They want secure boot enabled. The computer I'm using right now, it's got a 6th generation Intel chip. According to Microsoft, this thing is too old but it runs Windows 10 perfectly, boots up fast, handles everything I throw at it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this machine, and I'm guessing a lot of you are in the same boat. Your computer works fine, but Microsoft's telling you it's obsolete. That's where Rufus comes in. So, what's Rufus? It's basically a tool that takes a Windows installation file and puts it on a USB drive. But here's the cool part. It lets you modify that installation file so it skips all of Microsoft's hardware checks. Normally, if you try to install Windows 11 on an older computer, the installer just stops you. It says, sorry, your hardware isn't compatible, and that's it. Game over. But with Rufus, you can bypass all of that. Plus, it's got some other neat tricks. You can set it up so the installation runs mostly on its own. You can even create a local account, instead of being forced to sign in with a Microsoft account, which is something they've been trying really hard to block lately. All right. First thing you need to do is grab the Windows 11 installation file from Microsoft's website. Go to their download page, scroll down until you see the option for downloading the ISO file. Pick Windows 11 from the dropdown, hit confirm, then choose your language. This part's important if you're planning to upgrade your current Windows installation. Make sure you pick the same language your computer's already using. Otherwise, you won't be able to keep your files and programs. Hit confirm again, then download. This file's pretty big, so it might take a while depending on your internet speed. While that's downloading, head over to the Rufus website. Scroll down to where it says download. You'll see a few different options. But honestly, it doesn't matter which one you pick. Just grab whichever one looks right. The program doesn't even need to be installed. You just download it and run it. Okay, so once you've got both files downloaded, here's what you do. Open up Rufus. It might ask if you want to check for updates. Sure, why not? Now grab a USB drive. Needs to be at least 8 gigs. Plug that into your computer. Rufus should automatically detect it. In Rufus, click the button that says Select and find that Windows 11 ISO file you downloaded earlier. Next up, you need to pick the partition scheme. This sounds complicated, but it's really just asking whether your computer uses the newer UEFI system or the older legacy BIOS. Not sure which one you have? Easy way to check. Press Windows key plus R. Type in MCINFO32 and hit enter. Look for where it says BIOS mode. It'll say either UEFI or legacy. If it says legacy, change the partition scheme in Rufus to MBR. If it says UEFI, leave it on GPT. Got it? Cool, now hit start. This is where it gets good. Rufus is gonna pop up a window with a bunch of options. Let me walk you through what these do. First one, removes the requirement for having 4 gigs of RAM. Second one bypasses the secure boot check. Third one skips the TPM requirement. Check all three of those. Then there's this option to remove the Microsoft account requirement. Definitely check that. You can even type in a username here and it'll automatically create that local account during installation. If you leave it blank, it'll just ask you during setup. There's also options to automatically set your region. Skip all those privacy questions Microsoft loves to throw at you and disable BitLocker, which is their disk encryption thing. Pick whatever makes sense for you. Once you're done, hit OK. You'll get a warning that everything on the USB drive is about to get erased. Make sure there's nothing important on there because it's all getting wiped. Hit OK and let Rufus do its thing. 
This part takes a few minutes. Go grab a coffee or whatever. All right, so once Rufus finishes, you've got two ways to install Windows 11. Option one is an in-place upgrade. This installs Windows 11 right over your current Windows 10, and it keeps all your files and programs. Nothing gets deleted. Option two is a clean install. This wipes everything and gives you a fresh start. No old files, no old programs, nothing. It's like getting a brand new computer. Most people probably want to do the upgrade and keep their stuff. That's fine, but personally, I usually prefer backing everything up and doing a clean install. It tends to run smoother that way. Let me show you how the upgrade works. Open up the USB drive and run the setup file. It'll check for updates first. Then you get this warning from Microsoft saying installing on unsupported hardware isn't recommended, blah blah blah. Just click accept and keep going. Next screen should show you that it's about to install Windows 11 and it's keeping your personal files and apps look good. Hit install. Now you just wait. The computer's gonna restart a few times. It might take a while depending on how fast your machine is. Don't worry, it's all automatic. You don't need to do anything. Eventually, you'll end up at the Windows 11 desktop. All your old stuff should still be there. Want to confirm it worked? Press Windows key plus R, type Winver, and hit Enter. Should say version 25H2. If you want to do a clean install instead, restart your computer and boot from the USB drive. Usually, you need to press a specific key during startup to get to the boot menu. Could be F9, F12, Escape, depends on your computer. Pick the USB drive from the menu. You'll go through the language and keyboard settings. Then you need to pick where to install Windows. If you're doing a clean install, you need to delete all the old partitions first. Select each partition on your main drive and click Delete. Be careful here. Make sure you're deleting from the right drive. You don't want to accidentally wipe the wrong disk. Once you've got unallocated space, select that and hit Next. Windows will start installing. Computer's gonna restart a bunch of times. Just let it do its thing. When it's done, you'll have a fresh Windows 11 installation. Now, you might be wondering if Microsoft blocks updates on computers that don't meet their requirements. Good news, they don't. I tested this with two fresh installs, one on supported hardware, one on unsupported ran Windows Update on both. They both got the exact same updates. So no, you're not missing out on anything, and that's pretty much it. You just installed Windows 11 on a computer that Microsoft said was too old, didn't cost you anything, didn't require buying new hardware. Is it perfect? Look, there's always a small chance something might not work quite right. Microsoft says unsupported hardware might have compatibility issues, but honestly, for most people, everything runs just fine. Your computer works. It's fast enough for what you need. There's no reason to throw it out just because Microsoft wants to sell more new computers. So yeah, if you're refacing that October deadline and you do want want to shell out for a new machine, give this a shot. Worst case, it doesn't work and you're back where you started. Best case, you just saved yourself a few hundred bucks. All right, that's all I got. Good luck with your installation.